so keep that in mind. Yeah, hey, forget I asked. <laughs> That'll definitely It'll do. Ew. Join the f Discord. It was the least fun I've ever had playing this game. A small but vibrant and extremely humble community. No, I've seen the sleeves, but I'm like, you said you're suiting up and then you put your sleeve on. Thank you for saying that. Because I'm a demon on the keys. Next thing I know, we're both dead. I immediately left the lobby. In Vietnam. What are they playing for? Are they playing to win? <laughs> Stay humble. Stay humble. We are back, baby! Back in town, back in black, back from Vegas. Yikes. We've ventured from... I don't know. Uh, we're back from Vegas. Welcome to the Drop Shot, a uh, Call of Duty podcast episode number 160 plus one. 161 to, to do the adding for you. My name is Casey, nice. also known as Razanon. I am joined by my good friend Tanner. Tanner, how's it going, little bud? Good, how are you? We gotta start planning episode 200 soon. Well, soon is a soon is aggressive. That's an aggressive way to frame Got it. it. It is sneaking up, though. It's, I feel it's like up. episode 100 was not that long ago episode 100 we were planning we had stuff in the works for at least 25 episodes prior so not too crazy to think about true episode 101 was a production though yeah episode 200 uh, will be a disaster I mean, yeah yeah we yeah we might just skip it in fact uh Let's skip it we'll just do a, a rerun of 199 and we'll call it 200 what are your thoughts on that yeah anyways we cool we could Welcome to the show. Uh, today, we have an amount to talk about, uh, mostly as I'm sure you would all expect. You had brains on the news side of things. Um, there were a couple small changes that we're going to talk about to the current video games, but a lot of what is going to be talked about today is, of course, Vanguard. Uh, we got some more leaks. We got some things to talk about uh, besides leaks, con confirmations, etc. Uh, I'm very excited to get into it. Very excited to play Vanguard, in fact. We have 64 days, 1 hour, 52 minutes, and 30 seconds or so uh, until the release of that video game. Yeah. And that is hopefully going to be of both, of course, fun and exciting. But first, before we get into it, a couple announcements. Lead Stoner 420. Change it! <laughs> Welcome to our Patreon, buddy. Awful dog shit name. Awful. But, however, very much appreciate you. Welcome aboard our new gold fucking patron. God, God, it's a terrible name, but it is much appreciated, brother, and welcome. Aaron Clay upgrading from gold to platinum, who's better than Lead Stoner, of course. Anyone's better than Lead Stoner for twenty. That is yeah. perhaps true. Yeah. Ex uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Aaron, very much appreciated, King. Thank you very much. Getting that platinum in King shit for sure. And last but certainly not least, Jared J. Joining the Patreon at the gold tier, but going fucking straight to annual, dude. Wow. Saving himself He's some money. Saving himself some money. 16% of his money, to be exact. Just locking that bitch in for 12 fucking months of fire bonus content, dude. Jared. Thanks, buddy. We appreciate it. And uh, all, all of you guys, very much appreciated. Uh, for joining the uh, Patreon, which can, of course, be found at patreon.com slash the drop shot. It is the main way this podcast is funded. And um, and we appreciate all of your guys' support. We do bonus episodes, weekly hangouts, call-ins, more shit like that. So uh, thank you again. 
uh, for joining up or for being a patron. Patreon.com slash the drop shot. Now, speaking of the Patreon, all of our August episodes, all five of them, are live. They were live in the month of August as as promised, as expected. And I am quite happy about our latest ep where we kind of went, we waited for Vanguard Alpha Weekend to conclude. And then we talked about it uh, in in pretty lengthy detail, uh, I, I think. And it was an interesting conversation. And my mind sort of changed before having that conversation and afterward. Uh, Tanner and I surprisingly disagreed on more than we typically do, I think, uh, in terms of how we received the alpha and what our expectations are and what we thought. Um, and it was a really good conversation. So that episode, it's our last Patreon episode, it is live. So for you patrons, check it out. And if you wanted to join up, it would be there waiting for you. All the episodes would be, in fact. Yeah. That, but, was, um, that was a fun one. That was a really fun app. Yes, it was. A, it was a really fun app. It's exciting uh, talking about Vanguard and shit and seeing like the first real gameplay of it. It was. Yeah, that was. I, I like doing that episode a lot. Yeah, it got me more excited for the game. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I after seeing the alpha in general, it got me way more excited for the game because I was worried. Um, it was going to seem more like Cold War, so it doesn't, which is nice for me. So Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, it makes so, me very excited. Agreed. So we are going to talk about the Vanguard Alpha tonight. We're going to go to some length, but uh, we're not going to just rehash everything we already talked about. Um, so we, we have... We have a number of thoughts on the Vanguard Alpha we're going to share this evening, but... Uh, for even more, it's on the Patreon, just letting you guys know. Uh, also, for the patrons, for everyone, actually, we've ordered an amount of merchandise. An amount of merchandise. Yeah. 100 t-shirts, 50 coffee mugs, 50 whiskey glasses. The whiskey glasses are going to be etched with the broadcast logo. The coffee mug is going to be a coffee mug with the logo on it, and then the t-shirt going to be a black t-shirt with a logo on it we got a variety of sizes in the same proportion that we got discord votes uh we asked for your guys' sizes you told us so um we are getting we those have been ordered and we expect to be selling them inside of a month so in the month of september i am virtually certain that we will be open for business uh, yeah. Now it's small Team launch, down. small launch, but uh, we want to make sure our first launch goes smoothly, and then we're going to have more items to offer you, both maybe in terms of quantity, but also in terms of uh, different shit, like uh, variation, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so that is at that's going to be at thedropshot.com. We have a, we're going to have a merch store. It's going to be there. And if you are a Damascus patron, you'll also be getting a discount on everything. Always. So, always, yes. Uh, so, as long as that tier exists. But yes, basically always. So, uh, just letting you guys know that up front. Um, and we are very excited to get this merch going. This is going to be the first ever merch that we have with the, the new logo. And I expect this is going to be our logo in perpetuity. Pretty much perfect. I don't want to change anything about it. We're no longer worried about being sued for the logo. It's a great logo. Uh, so this will be the first ever merch sold with the correct logo on it. Um, so once that goes live, by the way, the other merch stores are closing. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, and we are very excited to, to bring you guys that. We're going to be getting each and every one of those items, by the way. And the whiskey glass has the etched fuck laser etched fucking logo on it. Dude, we saw a little prototype and it fucks. It fucks. Did you get that email? I don't think you did. Did what it have our logo on, that, on it? Yeah. 
Oh, no, I didn't get that. Cool. Yeah, I think he just sent it to me. That's awesome. Thanks for forwarding me that, buddy. Yeah, what was the size I'm, of it? How did it look? Perfect? I'll, I'll forward it to you right now. But yeah, it looked good. Did he um, send like a one of the shirt too? No, not the shirt. I would have sent you the shirt. But I was like, yeah, this is... I mean, it's the fucking... It's exactly what you expect. That's why I didn't even care. Uh, but yeah, cool. I'll send them to you right now, you dumb piece of shit. Anyways, yeah. are you excited, buddy? Oh, I'm very excited, yes. Yeah, I'm going to be... First episode where we have everything, I'm going to be wearing a shirt. I'm going to be drinking whiskey out of a whiskey glass. I'm going to have a cup of coffee, too. Yeah, oh, we're gonna, I'm going to be mer I'm going to be shilled merch up, merched up. up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. Yo, Just yeah. merch the fuck up, dude. Are there and shot no, glasses? Not, shot not yet. Glasses. There will be at a point, maybe. In two yeah. years, three years, maybe. Right it's now, possible, no. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. would do beer mugs and things like hats, hoodies before we did shot glasses because being an adult, uh, don't take shots. So I think once we get the store up and rolling and like we're, we know how everything goes, we'll just throw in a couple shot glasses in our next like one of our next orders and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. We probably wouldn't get that many because most people I, I imagine don't really give a shit about a shot glass. Uh, but we can get like, you know, 20 of them or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. True. I wouldn't be against Bugs, that. Yeah. I feel like it's easy enough. So uh, based on how this has been going with these guys so far. So, so the merch store is coming up boys. Uh, and then last announcement from me. We're fucking back to normal, dude. We are done with Vegas. I'm not leaving my house for at least two more years. Uh, we <laughs> are just back on schedule, dude. All the normal eps, normal schedule. Uh, things are going to get a little uh, mixed up because of Vanguard coming out. For example, when the Vanguard beta happens, I believe that's on a thursday yeah or a tuesday so we might do a live stream on like that thursday instead of that friday or something but in terms of how often we're going to be making our content and shit we're back we're back in business baby uh and we won't leave you guys again for at least two years uh i had i had almost no fun in vegas it was fine i would have been fine because you don't leave the fucking too. hotel room you guys just sit in the hotel room and do nothing absolutely fucking nothing of course well, you don't have fun doing that you guys sit there for well, fucking two and a half hours talking i'm like we're in vegas if you want to talk go fucking home go outside and do something gone, tanner literally anywhere else besides the fucking hotel room i mean holy shit you guys are cringe i would rather be i am not kidding anywhere the hallway sit in the hallway Guantanamo even Bay than on fucking God fremont damn. street dude cool the downtown area was so bad the people Me by the way walking around it the people that said oh old vegas is cool now it's hip it's nice it's fun fuck you i don't remember who you were if i did i would call you out by name you are a liar and you are a dipshit if you think old vegas is a nice area fuck yourself don't ever say that again god you guys are dumb yeah it was the worst thing that's ever happened to me. That was a big reason yeah. why I didn't have. Uh, I mean, I had some fun. It was fun. It was fun. It was worth going because I saw my friends and stuff. But could have been way fucking better if I'm driving to Las Vegas, Nevada. It could have gone way better. Yeah. Uh, could have gone way better. We should have just stayed on the strip. That was the main problem. Here's my Vegas pro tip. Stay at Caesars Palace, the Bellagio, <laughs> the Wynn. Uh, the Cosmopolitan, or literally do not go to Vegas. Just don't go. I, there's no point. Yeah. Maybe at that new Resorts World place. That place seemed pretty dope, actually. And it doesn't save you money to stay off the strip because the Uber and Lyft people will price gouge the fuck out of you, mm -hmm. and whatever money you saved on the room, you will more than pay for driving to and from the strip. Yeah, the taxi driver's Unless a scumbag. Unless you're driving bags, yourself yeah. like an asshole. Uh, but why are you going to Vegas if you don't... Yeah, if you have a DD well, maybe in your... If you're going to drink and drive, then maybe, sure. Yeah, yeah, go for it. But And we don't condone that, of course. That would be an illegal activity. But well, still, yeah. yeah. 
Cool. Anyway, old town, downtown, uptown, whatever the fuck, uptown, Vegas sucks. You up. Bad. But yeah. anyways, we're back. That's the point. We're back. Yeah. We're back in business, and we're going to be fucking ramping up for Vanguard, dude. We are going to be just ramping up, dude. We're just ramping the fuck up. And I'm very excited yep. about it. So yeah. we're going to be in the office. It's, as it were. it's crazy that you were so disgusted with Vegas that you may now not even leave your house to go to the wedding. That's how just disgusted you are in leaving your house. I was just leaving my house in general. Yeah. And the fucking drive there, dude. I thought Vegas was like three hours away. Two and a half. That was not a far away. drive. It was three and a half. It's not far. <sighs> okay. My my co-pilots were sleeping the whole time and it still didn't feel like a long drive, so. Yeah. Yeah, if I wasn't driving, it wouldn't have been as bad, too. It wasn't. I mean, it was, it was whatever. Fine. This doesn't matter. Any announcements from you, bud? Uh, Yeah, I, I want to thank... I don't know what this name is. Goobod? Goobod yeah. 1? Awful. <laughs> Change it. Horrible. Uh, But thank you very much for the offline sub, dude. He offline subbed... Seven days ago, I haven't streamed for like 11 days since the tournament. So thanks, buddy. Appreciate you very much. And that's it for me. Cool man. All right. Let's get into it. If you're listening for the jingle, here it is. Seabala. It's for the Prime Arena. Eight months. Good old master bait months. That's pretty good. That's good. I like that, buddy. Seabala, thank you. Uh, Goaty Boy, tier one, 12 months. The scam train for one year. Go. Let's go, dude. Thank you, King. And Rebel Bam Ham with the two gifted subs. Let's fucking go. Rebel. Thank you, King. Appreciate it. First two gifted subs on the channel. Thank you very much, dude. Awesome. Thank you, boys. King shit, boys. All right. Welcome to the show. Today, we have an amount to talk about. We're going to start with playlist updates. Uh, not much to say here. In Warzone on the 26th, and still in effect at the time of recording this, uh, we got buyback uh, slash stimulus BR for every playlist, actually. So you can't play regular Warzone right now, but you can play buyback solo duo trios or quads, which means if you have $4,500 currency on your person you'll auto respawn until that closes and that closes at the same time the gulag normally does other than that everything else is and that's still in and this is going on over one week now pretty interesting that's still in actually yeah and i quite like it so oh, I, I love i'm it. not mad about it you've been playing a lot more that because it's my playlist has stimulated your entertainment here's my and, black and helicopters time, buddy right? here's my black okay. helicopters All right, let's hear it Activision Black knows how many people have are fed up right now and not playing the game because of the cheater situation. Who are those people fed up with it? The good players, right? They're the ones not playing. They're the ones seeing all the cheaters. What else do all the really good players like? Buybacks. They said, hey, let's try to bring some of these guys back. Let's do only buybacks. And the people are loving it. You're seeing a ton of people streaming Warzone again. Warzone again, uh, last couple times I've looked at least, back having more Twitch viewers than Apex typically. At other times it doesn't. Um, but a lot better than it was doing like three or four weeks ago. So buybacks is a ton of fun. Highly recommend playing this playlist. Uh, if you like getting kills, it's a, just a blast really. So what's cool about it too, is that whether you're doing really well or really poorly, I think buybacks is better. So like if you're really good and you're always in fucking demon lobbies, That's true. good point. Yeah. If you get just fucking destroyed, in buybacks, it's like at least you don't have to like go all the way back to the main menu and then fucking let me change this attachment and take five minutes dropping back into loot. Uh, you just respawn and then like you can easily regain. I think actually one of the games we won uh, yesterday was a regained game. Like we all got wiped and then we all kind of like were struggling for mid game, but we all got back, got loading, and then we won the game. Yeah. That's just so much easier to do. You could do it in regular Warzone, but it's so much easier in buybacks. So, like, that's the one thing where if you're losing, it can help. And then if you're winning, obviously, 
more people are respawning, so it's more kills for you. So if you're if you're doing really well, buybacks is really fun too. Even more fun than normal for that um, reason. And you can just buy a loadout right away. Because you all just, like, if you're playing trios or quads, you can all just buy a loadout right away. And then even if you're playing duos, it's very easy to buy a loadout. You only need, what is that, a thousand more dollars. Yeah, you, la you just land um, on a loadout and you get a loadout right away. It's very yeah. fun. Yeah, exactly. So that's another cool part about it, too, is you basically just instantly have your loadout and you can just start fucking chugging along right away. Yeah. You have to loot up for 10K. So buybacks is really good. And it makes the game a lot of fun. Um, I We were asked once, would we prefer it to always be buybacks? I still think my answer is no, but boy, is it fun once in a while. And like even after a week, I don't think most people are sick of it. You know? I yeah, think it's a welcome I'm, change. I'm torn because I feel like the game mode is kind of too weird to be like the permanent game mode. And probably for the average person, they're just going to prefer to play regular BR. But it's like, if that means I don't have to go to the fucking dumb gulag every time, I love that. But um, yeah, kind of oh, torn no on gulag, if that should too, be. Yeah. yeah, that's the best part of it. You don't have to go to the dog shit gulag. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'd rather do that, though, than have regular BR, like permanent. But I'm glad this is still in. I'm, I'm having a ton of fun with it. And it's going to be noticeable. And the game's going to feel a lot slower, too. When it goes to back to regular BR, because like I'm I'm dropping a bunch of kills, it's just a blast. So I'm gonna be sad when it goes back, but it will at a point. This won't be the permanent game mode. So yeah, definitely not. So nonetheless, that's in the video game now, uh, and that's really it. So now we're gonna talk about patch notes, changes already in effect. None of this is actually official. We really just have two things from J-God to talk about. Uh, the first one is the resurgence of the neck damage multipliers. So J-God put out a video. Uh, this video and all the resources we talk about tonight will be linked in the show notes, of course. Uh, this video is about neck damage multipliers in Warzone. Now, we've already discovered this. They've already discovered this, and we've already talked about it, that there exist neck multipliers in Warzone. Uh, however, they started to test them, and there were a couple interesting things. So, first of all, the hitbox for neck is not the neck, and it's generous. Uh, it's very generous. So it goes from, like, like your nipple, go an inch above that. Okay, and that's where it starts. And then that goes all the way up to, like, your clavicle. That's, like, the neck hitbox. Which is typically more than upper chest and less than head. So it's very good to hit the neck. Uh, the, the multiplier is second only to a headshot. Uh, and it's like a pretty fucking generous hitbox. Like surprisingly generous. Yeah, it's huge. And uh, a lot of guns have like a pretty fucking good neck damage multiplier. And that has explained why certain weapons are much more meta than others when on paper it didn't seem like they should be. And the reason was because on paper they didn't account for neck damage multiplier. So J God made the example of the RPD versus the stoner. Both Cold War LMGs, right? Very similar stat line. Like in every way they are very similar in Warzone. However, the neck multiplier is way better on the stoner than the RPD. That's why it's so much. It does so much better, and it f has felt so much better before anyone really tested or knew that. Uh, so we're not going to go through every single like weapon and how insane neck damage is for this one versus that one. There's a lot. Every gun has a multiplier of some kind. We're not going to go every through everything, and none of these values actually changed recently. It's just that they were discovered recently. And this will explain why, for some of you, when you've been theory crafting meta ARs to use, and you've been using True Game Data's website to try and figure out, why is no one using the QBZ when its stat line is like almost as good as the Krig? Yet it feels so much worse when I use it. 
this is probably why. Oh. This is almost certainly why. So this just kind of clears up a lot of the mystery around uh, that phenomenon, which we've all known. I don't think this really changes the meta at all because everyone has tested every gun. There are way too many Warzone players where if, like, I don't know, the the M60, if that gun was really good, if that gun was good enough to be meta, it would be meta by now. People would have figured it out. So ultimately, I don't think this actually changes how anything is played. I don't think this changes what is meta anymore. But maybe it can inform some of your decisions for certain guns if you're on the fence between two. Uh, and it also, more than that, explains why certain guns feel better than others where they were otherwise very comparable. It's If you looked at the neck multiplier, that's probably why. And again, the neck multiplier might seem like it's not that big of a deal, but with how generous that hitbox is, you know, clavicle to almost nipple, then it starts to make sense. You're hitting that area a lot. Yeah. You're hitting that area a fucking lot. Um, so, yeah. What are, you, what are your thoughts on all this, Tanner? Yeah, I think what it was, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think anyone actually knew there was a deck or a neck um, specific like damage area and multipliers until when was the big weapon balance? Season four reloaded? Season four? I think it was season four. When they dropped those yeah. huge pats notes and they started talking about neck multipliers and we were like, what the fuck? I think that's when we first heard about it, so that's kind of why now they're getting around to testing these things. Uh, yeah, this isn't, like you said, this isn't game-changing at all. It's just interesting to see how big that box really is. Because like you would think the neck multiplier would be a couple inches below your neck, maybe. I mean, you you know, it's, it's a video game. You assume it's going to be a little bit bigger than the neck, but it is actually like an inch above the nipples all the way up to basically below your chin. That's a pretty big hitbox. Uh, and it's like, I feel like that's usually, it's like nobody's aiming at the stomach. Typically you're aiming at like center mass, like heart between yeah, the like nipples. Solar plexus, yeah. So there's probably people hitting that neck multiplier often and not even realizing it really. So a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. this isn't anything crazy, but it's interesting to see. And yeah, there are guns that are, have better neck damage multipliers. Like I think the XM4 is one of them. A lot of, a lot of people have been trying recently because of that. Um, I know, I think Jake was trying it yesterday and he was like, it's still dog shit, but you know, it, people are seeing this video and thinking like, like what Raz was saying, oh, like this gun may be meta now. It's probably not. No, it's just, you know, we, they just now discovered this. So it's new, but it's nothing's game changing about this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cause nothing actually changed. Like if the XM4, if we discover that it has a really good neck multiplier, it's like, well, people have tried an XM4 before and it's not good. So maybe it's not good. Maybe the neck multiplier is good, but it's not good for other reasons. Um, yeah. And, and you know, knowing this isn't going to make an XM4 good, for example. Yeah. yeah. Like the stoner's this... always been pretty good, but then everyone's just, I, I don't know. It's like just now making a lot of noise, but there's been people that have been using the stoner for yeah, months I wonder how that it's really happened. good. Everyone's know, using weird. a stoner with a 4X now. It's very odd. People are bored, I think. Yeah. So. Actually. Yeah. I think that is what it is. Yep. So, anyway, uh, what's this next little item here, Tanner? Next one here. This is more interesting. Uh, this is also from J-God here. So, recently, the 10 millimeter rounds for the Modern Warfare MP5 received a buff. Uh, they don't know exactly when. They're th assuming it was just during Season 5, but it may have even been before that at a point. Um, I've been running into this a lot lately. Even today, yesterday, I was getting killed by it, and I think... I think it was you or somebody said, why is everyone using the 10 millimeter MP5? What is going on here? So that is why. So the 10 millimeter MP5 kills faster than I think any gun in the game up to 10 meters besides the Akimbo M19s probably because it kills faster than the AS Val, which I believe was number two. So uh, that's why you're seeing this a lot lately. So average time to kill for the 10 mil rounds for the Modern Warfare MP5 is 450. The AS valve, which is fucking insane, is like 465, 470. Uh, and the regular Modern Warfare MP5 is like 530 or so. So this is pretty big. Um, it's insane, but the thing is, once you get up to 10 meters, there's a very steep damage drop off, and the gun's not good after that anymore. I mean, it's fine, but it, it's just not great. But inside of 10 meters, it kills very, very fast. So 
Again, this isn't anything overpowered really um, because the 10 millimeter rounds, you only get 30 bullets. So that's not, well, that's pretty much almost not usable for trios or quads. Fantastic for solos, good for duos like the AS Val. It shines in those situations. But when it comes to trios and quads, uh, it's not nearly as good. Now you can run sleight of hand with this, which makes the reload time a lot faster, obviously. Uh, and you can kind of sacrifice an attachment, actually, since the Modern Warfare MP5 has that barrel as a suppressor built in. So you kind of get a free attachment there. So most people just run sleight of hand. It has an insane time to kill, up to 10 meters. Um, yeah, so I, I was seeing this a lot today. And that's the only downside of it is that slow reload time. But yeah, you, you get a free attachment with it anyway. So this isn't a bad option to run. I haven't used it. I probably won't. Uh, I was using the OTS a lot. It was feeling fine. I was destroying kids, so I don't really see a reason to switch, but this technically is very, very good. Also, this is faster than an OTS-9, mm -hmm. which is, is kind of crazy. OTS-9 inside 10 meters is 484 millisecond time to kill. This MP5 10 mil is like 450. Yeah. So 30 milliseconds is not crazy but it's not nothing either that's a pretty fairly big deal yeah i would say ots 9 is probably still better because you have 10 more rounds faster reload speed and most importantly way better movement speed because mm -hmm. it's a cold war gun insane movement speed yeah so i think the ots 9 is still probably better but the MP5 does kill faster uh, up close. Yeah. And it probably has better hip. It uh, actually probably it has better hip fire than an OTS 9 too. For sure. That, that's a good point. Yeah. So there's definitely an argument here. Actually, I think both are going to be viable um, for sure. It has more recoil, though, than nine millimeter MP5. Um, yes, true. But I still just don't know, because, like, even though that time to kill is really good, you get 15 more rounds with the regular MP5 when you're using 45-round mags. That, I mean, damage per mag, if I'm not mistaken, I think J-God showed that, but I didn't look at it. Damage per mag is still going to be higher, I think, on the 9 mil with 45-round mags. I you, would imagine. Because you're yeah. still going to, like, with those last 15 bullets, you can easily down one last person where you'd already be reloading with the 10 millimeter rounds because you got to think you're going to miss shots. So on paper, it sounds a lot better, but uh, when you're missing shots and if somebody's beyond 10 meters, it's not going to be that good anyways. So, And 10 right. meters is, that's not very far. Like if I, <laughs> yeah, like you'll you'll take engagements inside of buildings all the time that are more than ten meters. So you have to be in someone's ass to get that time to kill. So yeah, all in all, I think I still like the OTS better right now. The OTS is so fucking good. I was using that as sniper support today with a Swiss. Really? It's got a steep damage drop off too, but the way I play with a Swiss, like with its insane mobility, I you know. I'm trying to snipe people when they're like less than 30 meters anyway. So it works out fine for me. Um, ultimately that I'm sure there are far better sniper support classes, but fuck that gun is fun. So much fun. I think if you're good enough with a Swiss too, like even if, or a sniper, even if you, so let's say a guy's at 25 meters, you snipe him. Even if you don't get the down, if you just hit him at all, then the damage drop off doesn't really matter. Switch to the OTS and finish it. Yeah. And you'll do it in no time at all, exactly. even with the damage drop off. So that's a that's another good point. That which is all contingent, of course, on you being good enough to snipe to do that, like pretty reliably. Uh, and that's a topic we've talked about. But yeah, I can I can see I can see people using that for sure. Yeah. Uh so yeah. Yeah, that's surprising, actually. I wonder if they did that buff on purpose, because they didn't make any notes about it. Shocker. Yeah. I feel like with Raven now, they probably didn't do it on purpose. I'm also wondering, actually, if this has just been there for a long time and no one noticed. Because even J-God said in that video, he's like, the ammo attachments, usually no one thinks to test because they're not ever used anyways. So it's like people don't think about those. I mean, this could have possibly been in the game for months. I don't know. I, I kind of just was skipping through the video. So maybe he said when it was found, but I'm pretty sure... This, they don't know when this was changed, so. Yeah. 
You can watch the video yourself though on J God's YouTube. Yeah, we will. I'll find the link and we'll link it for sure. So other than that, absolutely nothing officially was changed. So we are going to talk briefly about the Vanguard Alpha this weekend before we get into news. As I said in the announcements, uh, we talked about this at length on our latest Patreon episode. So you can go there uh, if you want to listen to that. Patreon.com slash drop shot. Shameless plug. But uh, we're still going to talk about it a little bit here. And we've also had time to kind of let our thoughts marinate on this topic. So maybe we've slightly changed or developed some new ideas um, since then, but I'm not sure. So, uh, starting with the good things, uh, number one, the optics in this game are fucking really good. Every single one of them. They have either the thinnest bezels or simply don't have a bezel. Just like a floating piece of glass. Giant fan. Giant fan. Uh, and, um, blind firing seems dog shit. Uh, the destructible cover is, like, cool, but it's not, um, it's not going to be groundbreaking, in my view. No. So, <laughs> pun, pun not intended. Uh, so, it'll be fine. And I do like being able to wallbang shit. Things seem very bangable in that game, which I'm a very big fan of. Uh, and that's... You know, I could, I could say more, but uh, what? Let's start with you, Tanner. What what, what did you like about the alpha? Um, yeah. So, like you said, the optics. I think these are the best optics I've ever seen in a Call of Duty. I think I saw probably there are probably a total of four optics I saw. They were all so damn good, perfect, just perfect. Uh, amazing visibility, bright dots on the red dots. Um, a lot of colors of the dots too. I wonder if you'll be able to customize that actually. So that's uh, the biggest thing for me. That's great to see. Um, the irons were good too, but it's like, yeah, people aren't going to be running them probably. Um, gun models and graphics, I thought look really, really good. Uh, you know, it pretty much looks like M-Dub. I wouldn't say improved past M-Dub, maybe actually even slightly worse, but the gun models look a lot better than Cold War, which is a good thing. Uh, that's, you know, something minor, but I like stuff like that. I hate the visual look of Cold War. The Cold War has fantastic colors. Everything else I hate the visuals of. So that's not good. Yeah, blind firing doesn't seem like it'll be overpowered at all. It just, I really don't think people end up doing it. Because, like, you have to just be shooting yeah. to do it. It's not like you can sit there with your gun up ready to blind fire, I'm pretty sure. It's like, blind firing is when you press the button to blind fire, it starts shooting, if I'm not mistaken. Sure, you yeah. can mount up behind it, but then you have to, like, go into the animation, I'm sure, and get... You have to unmount, probably, uh, and then do the blind fire. I don't know, we didn't play it, but that's how it appeared to me. So, I don't think that'll be an issue, and I just don't care about it anymore. So, that's good. Destructive walls, yeah, they don't seem like they'll be a massive issue. Uh, there are a couple things with it right now, like aim assist was tracking through the walls when they were not even broken. Uh, but I believe that was one of the things Sledgehammer said they're looking into already. And I think nameplates were showing up through them. So, those are little bugs that should get ironed out. But um, I don't think this will be a massive issue either. I think all the walls, all the destructive walls will be blown up inside of two minutes into the round. If you're on a standard 6v6 map, the common lanes that you're getting in gunfights in, those walls will all be gone within two minutes anyways. It just doesn't matter. So, yeah, that's cool. I'm fine with that. Uh, weapon customization is going to be really, really good, I think. Very True. similar to MDUV, very similar to Cold War. It's going to have all the detailed stats like Cold War has. Uh, but it's we're going to get a lot of attachments, like some of these guns up to 71 attachments from what we've been hearing, so that's amazing. And just core gameplay and the mechanics of it. Uh, it looks good. The movement speed looks pretty good. Uh, I like the bunny hopping part of it. You can bunny hop quite a bit, jump around corners easily. Um, yeah. there's, they're sliding. The sliding yep. looks good. So the core gameplay and mechanics themselves, just everything looks pretty solid which I'm happy to see. Because as we were talking about before the alpha, that's the number one thing we were going to look at. If the core gameplay doesn't look good, the year is shocked. It's not going to be a good game. So I think 
At the worst right now, we're going to end up with strict skill-based matchmaking, dog shit maps, poor visibility, all of those things like Emda, but at least at the core, the game will be pretty good. Good movement, good gun, pl good gunplay, good customization, etc. So, um, yeah, those are all like the good things that I notice about the alpha. Yeah. The bad. This is my biggest issue with it so far. Drum roll, please. If anyone's listened to any episodes, the visibility is fucking terrible. Uh, I actually have. Since the Patreon episode we recorded, I've actually, this opinion has actually developed from the visibility is really bad for Vanguard to the visibility is actually worse than M-Dubs. That's really how it seems in the alpha. The, the map, the Champion Hill map, arenas, whatever, it's all one map. Not good at all. Uh, for visibility, lots of clutter. Uh, it's dusk. Already kind of hard to see people. Uh, the visibility itself is just not great. The muzzle flash is fucking insane. So when you start shooting, there are explosions at the end of your gun, which is fine. That's how it works in real life. But very difficult to see what you're shooting at through that. And if you're using like incendiary rounds, then whatever you're shooting at is also exploding. And then your desire to see whom you are shooting at is a fantasy. It becomes a fantasy. Between the map, the muzzle flash, the incendiary rounds, the incendiary rounds also being shot at you, which is, which is explosion number three, by the way, uh, and dusk, clutter, Fantasy. It's a fantasy. Being able to see people is a fantasy in, in this game so far. So it's not all bad because if it was a different map, it could be better for sure. And there will be other maps in, in the game. Once you can use attachments, you can use silencers and flash hiders and shit. That will help. Ammo types. Hopefully they're not that good and people don't use them. Uh, well. I think it is pretty fucking likely that this is one of the things they do change is how the appearance of Ricochet with these ammo types is done. I think they will tone down, hopefully, the sparkler effect. Uh, so it could get better, and I expect it to get better. However, I do not see the visibility being good. I don't see it being as good as Cold War. I don't see it being acceptable. I think it'll be around the same visibility of MDub, which is to say playable, not great, though. Now, I don't know that for sure. This is an alpha, but that is my theory. Uh, and then the ammo types thing, those could be overpowered. I think if they're too overpowered, they'll get relatively balanced, though. Uh, but then there's like, will there be new guns that come out with like flechette rounds and then those are overpowered? I don't know. But the main thing for me, the, really the only bad thing in the alpha that I was super mauled about was the visibility. And I think it'll get better with the game coming out, but how much better is, uh, is the question. And that remains to be seen. Yeah. Um, Visibility was awful. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt to start because we've only seen one map and it was that time of day. Now, when we get, uh, when PlayStation gets the open beta in two weekends, well, basically a week and a half now, not even a week and a half, um, we will see sunny maps, I'm sure. If we don't, then that's already a bad sign that we're not going to have sunny maps. Awful. True. If, if we get a sunny map and there's bad visibility, then this is going to be like MDEB or even possibly worse uh, in terms of general visibility. So that's not good at all. But you got to think like even on MDEB, a game with dog shit visibility, think of maps like uh, Euphrates Bridge. Uh, what's that other one that was added late into the game? That's like kind of like Euphrates Crossfire and COD 4. Where it's Kandor hideout, Kandor hideout maps like that. Visibility is actually really good. And that reason yeah. is because True. there's not, well, Euphrates bridge does have a shitload of 
garbage on it, I guess. Like, Kandor Hideout is just a map. There's not clutter everywhere. It's bright and sunny. Uh, and you can see people, which is crazy. So kind of does show you it's not necessarily just the game. It's honestly probably more the time of day they put some of these maps on. And then the clutter particle and nonsense, effects particle too. effects, yeah. rust, rust. Imagine rust. one of the worst visibility map wise in the game as rust. Fucking embarrassing. Just dust floating particles everywhere. It's hard to see from one corner of the map to the other. Holy shit, man. That is, how can you do that to rust? Fuck you, Infinity Ward. So I think that is what it is. I think it's pretty easy to make the game not have bad visibility, make almost all of them sunny. I get it. You want a few like night maps or dusk maps, whatever. Make at least 85 to 90 percent of the maps bright and sunny, though. Uh, and I think the visibility will end up being fine. Um, yeah. One of the bigger issues for me is the ammo types and the visibility when shooting. Uh, so the muzzle flash was insane yeah as as you were saying you cannot see past the muzzle flash um i mean you'd you'd lose people in gunfights i don't get how you can even see them so the muzzle flash was fucking awful the other thing was we talked about this on the patreon episode a lot too but uh the devs at um sledgehammer think that fmj bullet a standard bullet a bullet is fucking explosive or something because that's how it looks in the game it looks like you're firing bazooka shells when it impacts it's just exploding. Uh, there's a bright fireball. It's fucking weird. i not sure what's going on there. So that needs to be changed absolutely now. And then that leads to the issue of there are a lot of ammo mods in the game. There's like incendiary rounds, explosive rounds. These have the potential to be so fucking broken and overpowered if they don't balance those correctly. And I don't know how you do balance them. I guess just give them all low magazine count. So it's like if you can use... Let's say you have a Thompson. If you can use a standard magazine of standard 45 rounds and you get a 50 round drum mag, uh, if the incendiary or explosive rounds for that, you only get like a 20 round mag, there's not many people that are going to run those explosive or incendiary rounds over the normal 50 round mag. I know I wouldn't. I would take the ammo count. Even if it does a little bit more damage, there's no reason to run those. So I think that's the only way they can balance those because if they just make it so they're so shit, then they're just going to have the same time to kill as a normal bullet, which means what was the point in adding that into the game? So I think there has to be a con to them, and that is going to be like ammo count or something. They'll probably do a shitload of damage, but they'll have uh, small mag sizes. And that's something I think is going to be the overpowered uh, issue that we have to start the game. Like in MW 2019, it was Claymores. Claymores one-tapped everyone for the first month of the game. Uh, they eventually fixed it. That's probably going to be some of these ammo mods. Some of them are going to be so fucking overpowered. It's all you're going to run into. And it's going to be a disaster. And it's going to make me not play the game in that first month. Uh, so I am very worried for that. Um, they uh, could use velocity too. In uh, like effective damage range. Like worse velocity. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of things they could do. And I hope they do figure something them. out. But <laughs> yeah. At the very least, also, those are all going to need lower mag counts. If somebody's running around with explosive-tipped bullets with a 100-round mag on an AR yeah. or something, see ya. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, yeah. yeah, other than that, time to kill seems a little too fast, but that was to be expected. I don't think anyone thought it was going to be the same time to kill as Cold War or even slower. That's not surprising at all, but I would prefer a little bit faster, or a little bit slower time to kill. Um think that's pretty much it though for everything i saw yeah so overall though despite my reservations about the visibility i think again i think it'll get better and by and large it looks pretty good uh it looks pretty good for an alpha the i was i wasn't really surprised to see anything honestly a lot of it was unsurprising to me one thing that was surprising was the movement seemed very fast, which is good in my view. Uh, and like Raiden posted a video of him like triple B hopping, like in strafe, like you can't even do that in M Dub. Uh, it was, and that that type of movement allows for a lot of outplay. Hopefully, it stays in the game. 
seems like it will, which we'll get into. And other than that, it's like, yeah, everything seemed to work pretty well. The slide looked fine. The mantle looked fine. The mount looked fine. Movement speed looked fine. Jump height looked fine. Uh, and those are, th that's not a knock on any of those things. That's really good. Because in Cold War, the sliding was, has always been fucking weird and it still is. Uh, something's off about it. And in the alpha to beta to launch game, it changed dramatically. Like, I think each iteration has a different slide. <laughs> it does, yeah. And, and then there were two different slides in live also. So it, it yeah. was just very weird. And because it was always fucking weird. And same with, like, the aim down sight animation in Cold War. It's just very jarring and odd. They never figured it out, really. Whereas in this game, everything appears to just function pretty fucking well. And that is a good thing for me. So a bunch of, a new Call of Duty game that works... With a bunch of new shit in it, and we're going to get into some of that new shit in the new section. I'm very excited for it. Yeah. So overall, despite how negative I might have sounded, I'm very, very, very much looking forward to this game. I am very ready for a new Call of Duty experience. And to anyone who says, man, I wish MDev had a two-year development life cycle, yikes and cringe. And I want you to remember that. When Vanguard comes out. So that's kind of how I would sum up my alpha thoughts. Yeah. I'm very excited to play this beta. And also another thing too is until Tanner and I play it ourselves, I don't put much stock in the alpha yeah. watching the game being played versus playing it myself. Things change a lot. So we'll have definitely more to say. And I'm, I would be shocked if none of our opinions changed after having played ourselves. So we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to talk about that uh, yeah. more when we actually play. Cool. All right. All right. Next. News and upcoming changes. Black Ops Cold War and Zombies Free Access Weekend from September 2nd through the 7th. That doesn't sound like a weekend to me. Sounds like five days, but cool. Uh, so you can play for free uh, Cold War multiplayer and zombies September 2nd to the 7th. Double XP in Cold War from the 3rd to the 7th uh, in Cold War, which doesn't matter. Might mean double weapon XP also. If that's the case, you should look into it. But uh, yeah, there you go. They have another double XP weekend. Crazy. Who would have thought? Yeah, I know. Uh, next, Activision posted a video making fun of a cheater that was banned in Warzone. So the Call of Duty Twitter account made a one minute video. And it was like they took some guy's TikTok where he was like, watch out, guys. Activision's doing hardware ID bans now. And they like made fun of him in this dumb little video or something. And then they also said like, we just banned 100,000 cheaters. Cheating is not okay. XD. To like brag on Twitter. I didn't watch the video. The thought of Call of Duty bragging about doing their job poorly disgusts me. And I refuse to watch the video, frankly. Wow. But did you watch the video, Tanner? Not by really, Call of Duty? no. Because I didn't really care. Yeah. It was funny, though. I mean, it was just, it was talking about that video. It was making fun of that video we already talked about where it was that kid that was like, they're doing hardware ID bans now. There's a bunch of accounts that I have that I haven't even played on. They're all banned. Like, I guarantee you we're not going to see any more cheaters in Warzone now. That's what the video was. It was that one. So, yeah, it's funny that they posted this. I don't care. I don't think it's a bad thing they posted it. I mean, they're just trying to kind of like show off now and say some shit since there's a quote anti cheat coming uh in a couple months here so it was fine it was kind of yeah. funny they posted it yeah i'm not mad about it at all no yeah i'm not mad either and i, I think the, the reason we're talking about this at all is because well because it's novel but also the fact that they are actually talking about cheaters and banning them they're talking about it a lot lately mm -hmm. that is a good sign because they are working on something 
to help, it seems like. They are working on something to help. And this is the most vocal Activision slash Call of Duty has ever been about the cheater situation and what they're going to do to fix it. They're talking about it often and at length. Yeah. That's the more, I think, important point of this is that it's just more, it's another drop in the bucket, as it were. And that's a good thing. Uh, and it actually seems like... I well, Okay, so yesterday, we didn't see many cheaters? I think we saw one. Yeah. No, no, excuse, er, yeah, on Tuesday, yeah. We saw one cheater, maybe two, but I also played for like six or seven hours. So the cheating situation does seem to be better right now. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Now, again, I put no stock in this because we've all been through this like battered wife syndrome. We've all been through this. before. Oh, he's going to get better. I, this time is different. Uh, it's not probably, but it does seem to be good right now. Uh, and that's what I've been hearing in, in, in our discord as well. And you played today and there were few cheaters. Is that correct, Tanner? Uh, I never personally saw one played for probably two, two and a half, three hours. Um, I never personally saw one. I think we did get killed to one at a point though, or like, I think I was already dead at the time or something, but there were a couple of people we like suspected were walling, but no like blatant aim botters. Um, really? So that was a good thing. It's pretty much at the point right now where like we talked about how, there are cheaters still, but it's at the point where I'll play for two and a half, three hours and not die to one. So when I do die to one, I'll be like, these fucking pieces of shit, dude, this shit game, these cheaters. But it's like, I load up and play another game and I'm over it because I had just played for three hours without one. And that's a record in Verdansk, right? So uh, it also seems to be the cheaters are now more on Rebirth. I keep seeing that. Like, I see people that play Rebirth. They keep talking about that. Uh, how many cheaters they're seeing. And I'm like, that's weird. Like, I haven't been seeing them in Verdance that often. It's kind of like they swapped over and the cheaters haven't been coming back yet to Verdance and they're all still in Rebirth. I don't know, but we haven't played Rebirth in a while. Uh, that's just things I've kind of been hearing. But yeah, it hasn't, the situation hasn't been that bad. They abandoned another 50,000 accounts today too, so they said. And then uh, it was funny because I saw Engine Owning tweet out that they're cheat is still undetected after this ban wave but there were like two comments on that tweet and they were like all my accounts just got banned i can't use any of them so like something is working something is happening that's different that wasn't happening a couple months ago so whatever it is it's doing an amount and i'm happy to see that um and just because they're doing like a small amount right now that does lead me to hope and believe that this anti-cheat coming with Vanguard will actually do something. Because, like, dude, if if I run into a couple cheaters a week playing the game for 15, 20 hours, fine. Okay. There's there's always going to be cheaters. That's totally serviceable. That's great. That's a win in my book. Um, If, if I'm not seeing one a day, then I think this anti-cheat coming is going to be great. So... So, now into news, other news items. Vanguard open beta. Here are some dates for you. September 10th through the 13th, PlayStation exclusive open beta. If you pre-order. So, let this be re your reminder. If you're listening to this podcast, you're going to play Vanguard. Pre-order it now. Because then you'll be able to play the open beta. Uh, so... Anyways, so this requires a pre-order, all of these dates for these open betas. September 10th through the 13th. And then September 16th through the 17th, Xbox, Battle.net, and PlayStation early access open beta. And then the following two days, the 18th to the 20th, open beta. Okay. So, how do you get early access? You pre-order. Okay. Okay. So got so Call of Duty made a shit image. Got it. Okay. If you don't pre-order, 
You can play the beta from the 17th, the, excuse me, the 18th to the 20th of September on any platform. Don't have to pre-order. If you do pre-order on that weekend, you can start on the 16th through the 20th uh, for all platforms. And then the 10th through the 13th, if you're on PlayStation and you pre-ordered. That's the one I'm confused about. The PlayStation one may just be if you're on PlayStation. Because now they have those deals every year. Or is that what the alpha was? I don't know. That part's not very clear at all. That I figured that was for anyone who owns a PlayStation. Because it says PlayStation Early Access. But that could mean early access in the sense that you get it before Xbox and PC. So I don't fucking know. It, it says in giant letters above that pre-order and get open beta early access but is the playstation i guess the playstation one isn't open beta technically it's playstation yeah exclusive. i think you have to pre-order still yeah i don't that's what i'm saying i don't think you have to that's cool. not that's not how it was in m dub but regardless i don't care i don't have a playstation so yeah eh. anyway whatever all the betas happening are in september uh so you should pre-order to be safe if you're going to get the fucking game anyway. Now, on to some more news. Exclusive Ace made a video, which will be linked in the show notes, on the Vanguard Time to Kill. Because one of the things Tanner and I had been talking about in our Patreon episode about Vanguard and the Alpha was the Time to Kill. And Tanner was like, yeah, it seems really fast to me. Like, as fast as M-Dub, I think is what he said. And then I was like, it seems kind of slower than that to me. Like maybe in between. And then we were like, I don't know. Exclusive Ace tested it. So we have a couple images here. I don't know if we'll be able to show these on the broadcast. He tested the time to kills of the alphas and compared them to the values for Cold War and like M-Dub. So, firstly, we'll start with the ARs. So, he tested two ARs from the Alpha. The bar and the STG. TTK for both of those was 302 milliseconds. For all Modern Warfare ARs, time to kill, on average, 196 milliseconds. That is more than 100 milliseconds faster than the Vanguard time to kill. And then Cold War, 322. So that's a little bit faster than the Vanguard TTKs for ARs. Uh, now, there is a little stipulation here. Headshots are much more powerful. Oh, wait. Oh, headshots in Vanguard seem much more powerful than Cold War. Headshot multipliers have not been tested yet. But TLDR for ARs anyway, between MW and Cold War, but much closer to Cold War. When you go over to SMGs, you get roughly the same story. Uh, the average between the Vanguard SMGs that were tested is roughly 200... 12, 210 millisecond time to kill. M dub 178, Cold War 268. So again, right in the middle, right in the middle is Vanguard of M dub and Cold War. And then LMGs, 230 milliseconds for Vanguard LMGs, 192 for M dub, and 264 for Cold War. So again, right in the the middle that time to kill i think i like a lot and the only issue i have with this is that again headshots seem much more powerful than cold war headshots which were quite powerful now it's possible that wasn't worded correctly i'm not sure and i hope it was honestly because a ttk between cold war and mdub i would very much like if this was as fast or faster than M-Dub, I would be very unhappy with that because the slower the time to kill, the wider the skill gap, the more your aim matters, yeah, uh, and the more skill matters, really. Uh, and, and you can separate yourself from, from, the, from the herd in that way. 
So the TTK being roughly in the middle of Cold War and M-Dub, but closer to Cold War than M-Dub within the middle. I'm pretty happy to hear that. And I'm hoping that the headshot multiplier is not fucking insane in this game. But overall, this is pretty good news. And frankly, fairly surprising. I expected the time to kill to be a lot closer to M-Dub than Cold War. What are your thoughts on this, Tanner? Yeah, I, this data? I expected it to be a lot closer to M-Dub 2 than Cold War. Um, I'm wondering if, like, for example, so, like, the assault rifle time to kill. It is, like you said, on average 100 milliseconds slower than Modern Warfare. So it takes more shots to kill. I feel like that's because the only two guns that were tested were the BAR, the BAR, and the STG-44. BAR especially, awful rate of fire. It may as well be semi-auto. And then the STG-44, also below average RPM. I feel like once we start getting ARs with a faster fire rate, which I feel like there weren't a ton of those as it is in World War II, but again, this is a video game, so they'll make it how they want to make it. Uh, once we get guns with a higher fire rate, I think we'll start seeing faster times to time to kill that'll bring that down a little bit uh but yeah that is definitely surprising to hear all in all if that's how it is that's fantastic with me yeah i uh um, right i don't want the m-dub m-dub in a lot of sense the time to kill it actually feels like you're playing hardcore with certain guns like there's just there's so often there's just not gunfights because the time to kill is too low so i like this i'm totally fine with it and i hope uh i hope these averages like stay stay true because that's that's really big if true so yeah i like this a lot yeah same absolutely i uh i'm very very curious to see how this game feels now the more information we learn about it the more i want to get my fucking hands on it and i'm also very curious what the headshot multiplier is going to be because if the time to kill on average is faster than cold war and headshot multiplier is even greater than it was in Cold War, that's going to suck a lot. Because then gunfights are going to be extremely inconsistent and extremely fast sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and that's a phenomenon that Tanner and I have talked about a lot in Cold War. Sometimes it feels like you can just eat bullets, and then other times you just get deleted, like faster than M-Dub speed deleted. And some... A lot of those are because you got sniped, get shit on. But a lot of them, too, are just because people are getting, like, lucky headshots uh, and you just have no chance because the multiplier is so high in Cold War. So that remains to be seen. But I'm... I'm All in all, these are promising figures for sure. Uh, now, next, we have some leaks from MW2 Ghost. I think pretty much everything we're going to talk about is all but confirmed. So he showed images on his Twitter, and you can go to his Twitter account, the ghost of MW change it uh, and, and see these images for yourself. We will not be showing them on stream because we do not want to get copyright stricken by Activision and their considerable legal team, but we'll tell you about the images. So create a class is in the game as you'd expect. Gunsmith is also in the game as you would expect. And they look exactly as you would expect. Yeah, the gunsmith, gunsmith looks exactly like the gunsmith literally looks like the modern warfare gunsmith except they changed the text from mdub text font to the cold war font <laughs> that's literally exactly what it looks like yeah, actually i know which i'm fine with i don't care i don't care what font you use unless it's comic sans it doesn't matter i don't care so the gunsmith looks fine and create a class looks fine as well there there's a gun there's another gun there's three perks there's equipment, and there is tactical. The one thing I did notice, though, now that I think about it, and let me pull this up before I speak on this. Give me one moment, please. Pull it up. Okay. What is not on the custom class thing, so there's primary, secondary, three perks. They're all different colors. Lethal, tactical. There's no wild card like in Cold War. Nor is there a field upgrade. Now in 
Modern Warfare, I believe field upgrade is not tied to a class. It's separate, yeah, which is which is how this will be. So that is how this will be, yeah. yes. Uh, so no wild card, but there will be field upgrades, and that's how it looks. So TLDR, again, just like MDub, the create a class is exactly the same. Uh, now, a departure from MDub. Guns can have eight attachments and two weapon perks, which is functionally ten attachments. One thing that I have not seen talked about at all, and I don't know why, is whether or not using all eight attachment slots or all ten attachment slots will require you to use a perk or not. So, for example, in Cold War, oh, you can yeah. put an attachment in all eight slots of your gun in Cold War. It's possible if you have the per uh, the wild card called Gunfighter. But if you don't have that wild card, if you're using Lawbreaker, for example, then you can only use five of the eight slots. No one has been talking about this. Maybe because it's a foregone conclusion that you can always use ten attachments. That's kind of what I'm leaning toward because that's how MDub is. MDub is like, hey, you get five attachments... You always do. Perks don't matter. So I'm leaning toward mm. you always being having access to all 10 or 8 attachments plus 2 weapon perks. But that's not confirmed yet. And it could be the case that you do need to use like a blue perk, for example, to have access to all weapon perks or something. And that would be kind of like if this were to translate to Warzone, what you would do is you would pick Gunfighter is your blue perk, Overkill is your red perk, fucking amped is your yellow perk for loadout one so you get both of your primaries with ten attachments on each and then loadout two you'd get fucking ghost and EOD or whatever that's 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 a future I can envision do you think this will require a perk to use or a field upgrade even yeah field I upgrade wouldn't make sense but a perk um yeah or there are wild cards and we just haven't seen them but I know at first I think he had said wild cards were coming and then he said he wasn't sure or that he what they weren't coming. I don't know. So wild cards, I guess, could technically still be coming. But yeah, from what I've seen, it seems like every single gun you're just going to get the, the 10 attachments for no matter what. Mm -hmm. uh, That's the impression. I yeah, too, which yeah. is fun for customization. And I like that. I'm totally fine with that. But uh, yeah, and we're assuming some of the screenshots he was posting... There were eight weapon slots and then two perks on them. So he was just assuming, okay, there must be eight different attachments that you can use per gun. And then also you get to choose two perks. Um, and we already know there's new perks being added. Uh, people were accidentally unlocking names of things in the alpha. I forgot the names, but it's like, we don't know what they are anyways. It just said unlocked this. Then people are trying to figure out what that word means, like what that perk is. But it's there. There are things that definitely weren't attachments. They're obviously names of perks. So that's what we know there. Um, yeah, that that could get more overpowered than the weapon attachments for sure. Uh, but also, I'm excited to see what perks they'll come up with, because it sounds like I already I think there were already like three or four that got unlocked that haven't been announced or anything yet that haven't been in previous CODs before. So that could be cool to see some different things, different change of pace. Um, but yeah, that'll be interesting if you get fucking two perks per weapon. I mean, there'd have to be something pretty damn good to not run like sleight of hand or something. You sleight know? of hand, I know. Or yeah. what if they put shit like deep impact as a perk? So like your guns do Ooh, even more FMJ. damage through walls, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah. don't know. That I'm more interested to see that than I think the weapon attachments, really. Trying to figure out, so if there are eight attachment slots per weapon, so you'd have a barrel. Um, Maybe the same as the Cold War ones. It would be like muzzle, barrel, under barrel, tactical device, magazine, grip, stock. Optic. Optic. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. But I think they they talked about for this like ammo types being a different category, but maybe it won't be. Maybe ammo types and magazine size will just be in one. Oh, that's possible too. You might be right. So I don't know. It, yeah. I'm I'm more leaning towards now. They're probably just going to be in one, seeing that we're getting eight. It seems. 
Um, unless there are 10 and just the screenshots we happen to see were only perks, then maybe there is a there's an ammo type and then there's also a magazine size and then that would leave space for one more that we don't know what that would be, you know? Or trigger or something maybe, different triggers that could fire faster here, or something. Yeah, here's another fucking black helicopters. Or this game's more like M than we thought. You can use up to 10 attachments, but there are actually 15 attachment slots per gun. So in M-Dub, you're guaranteed five, but there are eight or 10. I think it's like eight. I think it depends on the gun, but like you can't use every attachment slot for any gun in M-Dub. No. Except like a launcher. So this could be the same way where you can equip 10, but you have 15 to pick from. So you could add things like the trigger uh, or like the upper receiver. I don't know. I'm, I don't shoot guns, but you could figure it out. I'm not a Navy SEAL. That I think actually would be the best case scenario because then it's even way more customization. Instead That's of saying, true. what is the best in slot item for this one of 10, which I'm guaranteed every one of, you have to say, okay, would I rather have a muzzle or an optic? Because a problem I have with this is that if you're guaranteed all 10 and there are only 10, then iron sights don't matter anymore. Which is they fine. They just don't matter. Uh, I like... Having to decide whether or not I want iron sights on a gun, though. Like, in Warzone, if I'm using a sniper with an AR, I like having to figure out, can I get away with the iron sights on this gun? Or not? Is it worth it for me? Like, I yeah. really want to run stippled grip tape, but the irons on the AN-94 are so dog shit that I just can't afford to do it. I like that. I don't know. What do you think? You like it because that's all you've ever had. So it's like, if we had the ability to just always run a red dot, you're not going to yeah. end up complaining about it. And you're not going to bitch about some guy killing you. Oh, fuck, that guy killed me because he had a red dot. It doesn't matter. It's just, it's it's going to make the game better for you. And it's not going to have any negative impact at all, really. So that's what I'm saying. I think... If it's all balanced correctly, and based on how the time to kill is sounding now, it is balanced correctly, then I have no issue being able to choose um, an attachment for every single slot and using it, you know? Another, yeah, that's a fair point. But another thing, too, is that if you only have 10 slots and you can use every single one, then things will get extremely cookie cutter. Uh, extremely quickly, which I guess uh, even that doesn't matter that much because th you think about Warzone. Warzone's everything super cookie cutter anyway. Yeah, I don't. You do see some variation though. Again, like some people would r would rather have the you know a five milliwatt laser than an optic. So like there even among like the pro scene, like the Warzone competitor scene, there is variety on how they set up their guns. Like Huskers and Symphony, I was looking at their OTS-9 builds for Warzone yesterday before stream, and they have different setups. Yeah. And it's because they're not using the same five slots. So, like, Huskers doesn't use an underbarrel at all, whereas Symphony uses, like, the patrol grip or the bruiser grip. And that just wouldn't be possible if there were only five slots. I feel like if there were only five slots and they were guaranteed five, they would both, everyone would have the same LTS 9 loadout. I kind of like that aspect too. Hmm. I feel like either. we'll still see it either. Go ahead. I feel like we'd still see a lot of variations. It's like, even then, if there's, if some guns have 71 attachments, it's like there may be eight different barrels to choose from. There will still be people running different barrels. I don't think that has a huge impact on it, really, to be honest. I yeah. don't know. It's like, yeah, they, once people find out what the quote meta is, that'll be like the popular thing. Uh, but I don't, I, you'll always see people running different shit, no matter what. That's how most of the pros are. They run slightly different classes. So 
there will be small changes here. People will think like, oh, this feels different to me, but it really does. It, it's like it's like everyone, most of the pros, all of the pros pretty much, still using the Car 98 over the Swiss. I don't get it. I think it's because they haven't tried the Swiss or haven't done the correct setup for it. I'm not sure. Why would you use the Car 98? It has worse reload speed, worse mobility, worse bullet velocity, worse ADS time. Why are you not using the Swiss? You know, But it's like people are just used to using that, so that's what they use because they don't know any better because they don't experiment with anything. So regardless, at least for months in Warzone, we're going to have people using a lot of different weapon loadouts, I think, different variations of things, which would be a nice change of pace either way. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, no matter what, I I like this. Yeah, uh, ten, ten attachments is better than five. It's more customization. Even if there are only ten slots, it's still more customization. I think so. It I, is just I'm, weird though. If like by default you can choose every attachment, and then you go inside a war zone and you can only pick five. That's where it's like Cold War. Yeah, you can use every attachment slot with a wild card. But so that's not as weird when you go into uh, war zone and then you can only choose from five of them five of those that's what doesn't make any sense again and i haven't seen people talking about that shit yet but it'll be seamless don't worry it'll yeah well you're you're just over yeah that, of course right what a fucking meme i and i'm very pleased to report not a goddamn soul has told us yet they were overthinking it well it's too earnest. early yet they'll start telling us in like a month once yeah, we play true. the beta once we start talking about it more yeah. yeah i think you're right so well i'll refer you guys to our a year podcast a year ago anyways also from ghost of m dub change it on august 30th he posted a gif on twitter of a syringe squirting liquid out of it mm. this is of course to say Squirters. there will be stim shots in no tanner please got it tanner come on pinup girls are not squirters okay you're being very rude and sexist there will be stim shots in Vanguard. I believe this. I think it is almost certainly true. This is enough for me to just say it, there are stim shots in Vanguard. It would be the least surprising thing ever. I don't particularly care. I think that's probably fine. If these yeah. time to kill values are accurate, then stim shots will be fine. Um... I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I thought they were really weird when they came out in M-Dub. Or in Black Ops 4, actually. I remember thinking, this is new. But then I used it, and like everyone used it. Uh, and I think it's like probably fine. Uh, and a, yeah, yeah so I have nothing against stim Vanguard, shots. Yeah, I think it's I actually fine. like the idea of if people want to use Yeah, I've, I have no issues with stim shots at all. A stim, yeah, and the reason I'm fine with it, I think, is because if you're losing a gunfight... A sim shot is not going to save you. There's not enough no. time. Yeah, exactly. So, therefore, I think stim shot's probably fine. Uh, do you think it'll be rechargeable like it is in Cold War or consumed like it is in M-Dub? I'm going to assume everything's going to be more like M-Dub. So, yeah, I think more like M-Dub, probably. That's the vibe I get as well. Yeah. I think you get two and they will be consumed on use. So you won't get them back unless you're running the restock equivalent. That is my impression. But nonetheless, there will be stim shots in Vanguard. Cool. Uh, and then lastly, Sledgehammer made a tweet about issues that they are addressing based on feedback they received for their alpha of Vanguard. We're going to take these one by one. Visibility when damaged. So again, like MDub. When you start getting shot, there's like blood and red shit on the periphery of your screen, which is pretty standard for a Call of Duty game. And any FPS, really. That's super common little trope. But also, it goes like more and more monochrome until you're dead, which was in the, the game of M-Dub at launch. And that shit was removed post-haste because everyone was molding about it. As they should, I think. Yo, yeah, it was awful. If I'm, if I have one health, I'm already fucked. You don't need to also make it impossible for me to see to make it even worse. I'm probably dead anyway. At least let me watch this guy kill me, please. So they've acknowledged that. That's one is issue that they are addressing. Spawn tuning. 
This is one thing we didn't talk about, and the reason is because I don't really care, to be honest. The spawns in Champion Hill are dog shit. Yeah, uh, they're expect? really fucking trash. Really fucking trash. Uh, as you would expect, and also, I'm never playing Champion Hill. Don't care if the spawns <laughs> yeah. are bad. It's, it's what if the open beta is only Champion Hill? Uh, I'll play it. Yeah, Wouldn't be I'll thrilled, but I'll play an it. An hour. So, it won't be, by the way, for anyone listening. It'll be multiplayer. Uh, so they're going to fix the Champion Hill spawns. Cool, don't care. Map visibility. What do you think this means? Not much. <laughs> I don't know. I yeah. Realistically, I don't know what that actually means and what they would actually change with it. Like, are they going to change right. the fucking time of the day to every map to high noon? I, I don't know. How much are they going to do? They'd have If they actually want to increase the map visibility, that would be so much time spent on literally probably every single map to at least get the visibility I'm thinking and I'm imagining. So uh, that's the one thing I don't think out of this list we're going through. I don't think that'll be changed substantially at all. Right. Yes. I completely. I don't agree. know what it means. I, exactly. I don't know what this means, and I don't expect it to improve much. Uh, because what do, what would that entail? Yeah. How would Sledgehammer Games increase map visibility? Like, well, they could just remove a bunch of shit on the map. Changing the colors of literally everything. They're not going to do that. It's like how much you really. Or adding do that? adding colors. The, yeah, that could help because it's all one color, right? Just yeah. shit, br just shit brown. Uh, so they could do that too, I guess. Uh, sure, but like, yeah. Uh, so this is something where I'm glad that they said they're addressing it because that means that they've heard the feedback and acknowledged the visibility isn't great. And if they try to ta tackle the issue, I think they aren't going to make it worse. I yeah. think they will. It will go from no improvement to marginal maybe moderate improvement in yeah. terms of map visibility no matter what that's good so i'm glad that they said it but i don't expect much here i it's, agree with it's you. just an alpha though the visibility should be way better on launch right yeah it's just yeah. an alpha they got plenty of time to fix all that even though yeah, they've already finished 16 maps that have awful visibility yeah it'll be fine they'll fix it for yeah. everyone saying that i want you to go look at like the modern warfare alpha on YouTube and then compare it to your last game of M dub on that map. Tell me what's different to you. Very little dude. Very little. The There's game differences, is done. No doubt, but yeah, it's yeah, there are differences, but they're not substantial at all. And you could do the same for cold war. Yep. Uh, the cold war alpha was actually sort of different than launch game, but not too, too much. Um, audio mix tuning. I heard complaints that the audio mix was really fucking weird and like there were a really odd glaring inconsistencies. Footsteps were quiet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And like reload plus melee sound was like deafeningly loud or something. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, this is something that is pretty easily changed I would imagine and they will fix or improve significantly. Because all you have to do is, like, go into the, like, you know, footstep.mp3 file and just turn the volume up. It's that easy, being a, de a dev. Yeah, you just go I mean, and hire just turn the me. volume. Yeah. Hire me. It's so simple. Figure it out. Uh, no, but really, I think audio mix tuning is something that is much more easily accomplished than, like, map yeah. visibility. I, I expect this to improve a lot. Yeah, yeah. they should show uh, Infinity Ward how to raise and lower those mp3s. Maybe they can finally lower the sound of precision airstrikes. That would be uh, so two cool. years later because that's yeah. I mean, those have been deafening since day one of Modern Warfare 2019. That was one of the most the highest thing I saw people complaining about all the time when M Dub came out. Never addressed it. Never did a goddamn thing. Shrieks are Not fucking once. deafening in that game. They the audio itself is fantastic. The level. 20% too high. Lower it. They've never done it. So also, yep. I'm worried Sledgehammer will end up doing that same thing, but yeah, whatever. We'll yeah. see. Nameplate visibility issues. I don't know what this means. They were showing up through walls. Okay, that's what it means. So, a, so walls, shit like that. 
Okay, so in that case, I expect that to be pretty much fixed. That's if like you're seeing bug, names yeah. through walls, yeah, they're gonna fix that. That's gonna be like a really high priority because if 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 name plays just show through walls for the rest of the game, no one will play. Like that would be so insane. Yeah. So they'll fix that 100. percent And then aim assist through destructible walls. This one is, I don't know. Uh, Tanner and I talked about this on our Patreon episode, patreoncom slash the drop shot, of course. Backlog's always available. Sign up now. Thanks. Get scammed. Uh, this, I feel like, from a coding perspective, is a fairly difficult problem to tackle because, well, I don't exactly know why, but if you have some membrane that is semi-permeable, some structure, then you're, like, telling the game or you're, like, coding in that, like, okay... Bullets are going to be able to, like, go through here on, like, you know, the side of a uh, uh, concrete yeah, hanger. Yeah. But, but you can't let nameplates show until the wall is completely blown out? Or does the wall only need to have yeah. some of it blown out? Or only where the character is? That's a toughie. And how they manage this is a completely open question, in my opinion. I don't know if they'll be able to do it. Yeah, and it's like, will aim assist get a very small amount of slowdown when, you know, strafing or looking left and right through a destructive wall when it's not blown up, like even the smallest amount, so you can bang through it? Since it's destructible, they're probably thinking, oh, people, you know, can shoot people through it obviously so then they're in their mind they're probably thinking oh we should give them like a small amount of aim assist through it but it's like if you're on kbam you're not going to see the person so you won't get that so it's that's going to be difficult to balance that's the only issue i can see with destructive walls so that's an issue you know what i'm going to do when the game starts take a bunch of grenades and blow every single one up so i don't have that <laughs> issue that's going to be yeah. the only way to solve you'll it, have but. a you'll have a match start class yeah. it's going to be rocket launcher hey get two you. grenades <laughs> That, that'll be meta. Yeah, that'll be meta. <laughs> Just run around destroying shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm more concerned about what this could mean on the new Warzone map, if anything. Because Warzone, with a massive map, you'll run into way more areas that have destructive walls, d destructible walls that aren't blown up. You will you can get to late game final circle and have destructible walls that aren't blown up. True. That could end up being a bigger issue. We'll pr we probably won't do like That's our first point. Vanguard Warzone episode until after we play the beta i bet once we play the open beta we'll probably do i'm thinking a patreon episode about what our guesses are of how the seamless transition is going to take place into Warzone, what we expect to see shit like that uh that'll be exciting but we need to play the game first see some more multiplayer maps see some more guns feel it out um because that could be a disaster but for multiplayer i don't think it'll be that big of a problem agreed agreed all right, uh, Tanner, anything else you wanted to talk about this evening, this fine evening? Uh, no, I think that's it, boys. All right. So, as we said, uh, not too terribly much uh, this, this week. Everyone's getting ready for Vanguard. Uh, everyone over at Activision's all hands on deck with this, so... For the next few weeks, perhaps even months, I, I would say expect largely Vanguard news and a lot of it coming out. And there's probably going to be a bit of a lull after the beta where we're just waiting from beta to, to launch. Yeah. And there's going to be like a moratorium on, on leaks, potentially, uh, or not. I don't know. Every uh, Wednesday and Saturday will be a Q&A up. Yeah, per perhaps. Uh, and, <laughs> and I think... Well, certainly there's going to be a season six for Cold War and Warzone. We'll be covering that, of course, but expect a lot more Vanguard uh, going forward. And we are very, very excited to cover all of this shit because we're very, very excited to play it. Now, I would like to, to take this time to go through our iTunes review of the week, month, season. Uh, I picked an iTunes review to read. 
if you write a good review and it's five stars on iTunes, I might read it on the broadcast. But it has to be five stars, and we appreciate it. iTunes reviews help a lot, so please rate us five stars. Write a review if you want to. This is from Reese Asoros Rex. Do I need to say it? Makes my... Change it. Makes my ears wet AF. It's the title of this five-star review. This podcast makes me feel free, like standing naked on the edge of a cliff jump. In-game, of course. I just want to eat cheeseburgers with these two angles of cod. Angels. E-L. Fiddle with me. Okay. Well, Reese-asaurus. Reese-asaurus. Rex. For, oh, of course, you're Australian. Very much appreciated. Thanks for the analytics, you dumb bitch. Uh, change your name, of course. And that is very kind of you, I guess. Fiddle with me. Is it angelic to fiddle? Isn't it the devil who's like fiddling down to Georgia or whatever? Uh, anyway, whatever. Any fiddlers? Hey, Reseosaurus. Thanks, dude. Once again, rate us on iTunes. That is it, boys and girls. Patreon.com slash the drop shot. We've got bonus eps, weekly hangouts, community events, merch store discounts, more. Mainly the bonus episodes, though. We do five a month, uh, and Patreon starts at five bucks a month, five little baby bucks a month. It's the best way to support the program. It's best for us, and it's best for you. It's where we offer all of our bonus content. Please, if you like this dog shit podcast and you want to waste your money, go to patreon.com slash the drop shot, bitch, and sign up and figure it the fuck out, dude. Uh, we would very much appreciate it. You would like the bonus content instant access, dude, to fucking 52 and counting bonus eps. More than that, actually. You count the video only ones. It's a steal. So it's it's really is a steal. So uh, consider joining. Uh, we got a website, thedropshot.com. You can find links to everything there. We got a Discord. Join the fucking Discord, of course. We've got the YouTube with video podcasts on it. We do best of the month videos on YouTube. We've got a TikTok. We do daily TikTok uploads of clips from us playing the video game and or little funny segments of the program. Uh, you can find all that shit again at thedropshot.com. Boys, that is it. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for listening. Have an excellent evening, of course. As always, remember. Stay humble. Stay humble.